This video will focus on the Ready, Set, Go problems from Unit 8, Lesson 1. In the Ready section, you'll, you're finding the product of each set of linear binomials and writing the expression in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's look at an example. Here, we have x minus 6 times 5x plus 2. We are going to be using the distributive property to remove the parentheses. We will need to distribute each of the terms in the first binomial by each of the terms in the second binomial. When we distribute the x to the 5x and to the 2, we get 5x squared plus 2x. When we distribute the negative 6 to the 5x and to the 2, we get negative 30x minus 12. Our new expression is now 5x squared plus 2x minus 30x minus 12. Remember that the standard form for the trinomial needs to be written in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. After we combine our like terms, we are left with 5x squared minus 28x minus 12. In the set section, you're factoring polynomials by rewriting each given expression as a product of two linear factors. In today's task, we develop the use of an area diagram to support factoring certain polynomials. Let's review. For the given area model, we know that the original large square is x by x units, so let's start by labeling the square. We also know that three units were added across the top and one unit was added along the left side. Let's label those. We know that to find the area of the entire rectangle, we must multiply the entire length by the entire width. In today's task, we learned that we could find the area of each individual rectangle and then combine those areas to get the entire area. The dimensions of the large square are x by x, which gives us an area of x squared. The dimensions of the rectangles are x by 1, which gives us an area of x for each rectangle. The dimensions of the small squares are one by one, which gives us an area of one for each small square. Once we combine our like terms, we find that the area of the entire rectangle is x squared plus four x plus three. Now let's look at an example like the ones in your workbook. In this example, we're given the polynomial in standard form and we're being asked to write the two linear factors. Let's use the area model to help us. Remember, the area model must always create a rectangle. The first term in this trinomial is x squared. We know that x times x is equal to x squared, so the initial square has dimensions of x by x. We know that the second term in the trinomial represents the number of rectangles with dimensions x by one, and we see that we have five of those. We know that the third term in the trinomial represents the number of small squares with dimensions one by one, and we see that we have six of those. If we were to place all five of the rectangles below the large square, we wouldn't be able to use the, small, the six small squares to complete the rectangle. If we move one of the rectangles to the right side of the large square, we have two small squares left over. If we move another rectangle to the right side of the large square, we can complete the rectangle using all of the small squares. Now we can label the outside of the entire rectangle to get the linear factors we find that the linear factors are x plus 2 and x plus 3.
Let's look at one more example. Again, we see that the first term is x squared, which means we are starting with a large square with dimensions x by x. We also see that we have three x's, which are represented by rectangles with dimensions x by one. We do not have a third or constant term, so we don't have any small squares. We have formed a complete rectangle, so we can go ahead and label the sides of the entire rectangle. We find that the linear factors are x and x plus three. In the go section, you're finding the area of the shaded region for each of the given shapes. Let's look at an example. We have a shaded rectangle with dimensions 8x plus 1 by 5x with a smaller rectangle inside with dimensions 3x plus 1 by x. First, we need to find the area of the entire shaded rectangle by multiplying its length 5x by its width 8x plus 1. Using the distributive property, we will find that the area of the shaded rectangle is 40x squared plus 5x. Next, we will need to find the area of the smaller unshaded rectangle located inside the larger shaded rectangle. We find that area by multiplying its length x by its width 3x plus 1. Again, we will use the distributive property to multiply and we find that the area is 3x squared plus x. Finally, we will subtract the smaller non-shaded area rectangle from the larger shaded rectangle by combining like terms. We will subtract 3x squared from 40x squared, which leaves us with 37x squared. We also need to subtract 1x from the 5x which leaves us with 4x. So the area of the shaded portion of the rectangle is 37x squared plus 4x square feet.